Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create a camera that follows our player, and we're going to take it a step further and create an area of influence. For example, if I start walking over to the right, you can see that we have a cliff, and I've left some debug in here just to show it. If I walk over to the right, you can see that the camera is now influenced by this orange little circle and it's showing us that there's a coin all the way over here that we would have to figure out how to get our player to and no matter what i do to my player the camera stays in spot until i leave the area of influence and it snaps back to our player so that's what we're going to be creating so let's close this and roll the intro and get right to the code So we have our default project here and we have some sprites. And I wanna mention that the sprites that I'm using, if we are using something from open game art, you could always find them in the source file here. If we look at the room, the one thing to point out is we are using a viewport. So that means that we have this white square here. Let me just kind of turn everything off except for, let's say the background here. So we have this white square and this is what is called a viewport. So our room size is 1920 by 768. So that expands all the way over here. And the viewport is basically setting up a camera in Game Maker Studio 2 to only show a portion of our room. So if I close my room settings and I go to the viewports and cameras, you can see that I've enabled the viewport. We're also clearing the viewport background so we don't get any streaking. And I'm only using viewport zero. So I wanna make sure that that one is visible. Now the camera properties, I'm using 640 by 480. So this is the actual white square. This is what will be projected. So I'll keep that as 640 by 480. You can use different, um, for different variables. You will just have to account for them in your game. Now the viewport properties itself, I'm using 1024 by 768. And that's the actual window that comes up when we run the game. If I turn everything back on and I run the game, we should see kind of the player fall down and nothing else. You can see my player is at the bottom. So we're gonna to have to set up the actual camera and we're gonna get back to this stuff in just a second. In the workspace, if we have our object camera here, you can see that we have a target, we have an offset X and Y value built in. We have a create event where all we're doing is assigning the viewport zero to this variable and we have our step event. In the room, if we find our camera, which is this guy right here, I normally put them in the top left. If I open this up, we go to variables, you can see that our target is set to this object human, and that just happens to be our character itself. We're not using an X offset, we are using a Y offset, and I'll explain that in one second. In our workspace, we have our camera variable, we're setting it to the viewport zero, and then we say if we, if we have a target, then we wanna come in here. So if we have a target, what I wanna do is I wanna snap this camera to the middle of that target. So I can create two new variables called half width. I can make sure that I spell things right. And I'm gonna use a function called camera underscore get view and we want the width. And then we pass it the viewport, but we already have that stored in the variable camera. So I'm gonna divide that by half and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same with the height. I'll just change my variable. So this will give us the half of the width and half of the height of our viewport. So if our viewport is 640 by whatever it is, 720, so that will give us the middle portions. Next, what we need to do is we need to figure out where on our target that we are going to have this camera. So our target is gonna be set to this player here. And basically what we wanna do is we wanna have the camera position it in the center accordingly to wherever the player is. So if we go back to our workspace, we could say VARXX equals, let's say the target.x minus half width. So the reason we're doing that is if we were just to say the target.x, he would be over here and our camera would be all the way over here. Sorry, all the way over here. So what we're doing is we're taking away half the width to move them to move our camera into the middle. We're gonna do the same with the height. So we'll see yy equals the target.y minus half height. And now what I wanna do is I wanna lerp the position of our x and y coordinates. So I'll say x equals lerp, 
x to the xx position, and we will use lerp speed. Now we haven't got this defined, so let's go under our create event. Let's define this as 0.08 to make it smooth. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, with the current x position, I want it to go to wherever, wherever this xx position is at a certain percentage over time. And we're going to do that with the y as well. So we'll add that in. And the only thing now to do is to set the camera view position. And we're going to use the camera variable at the X and Y coordinates. So if I hit F5 right now, hopefully we should see our target is going to follow the player. However, what we have is we have a lot of the space showing at the bottom. And for at least this game, it's not something I would like to do. So in the room, you'll remember if we bring up the camera, and the variables, we had some offsets here. So we want to add that into our code because we want to bring the camera up 110 pixels so we're not showing the bottom. So in the X and Y variables here at X, X and Y, Y, all we have to do is add the offset X and add the offset Y. So now when we run the game, the offsets are added in and you can see that we're not going down as far and our game is still working. So I can come all the way over here and you can see we're not being influenced, but we'll work on that next. So at least we have a camera that's going to follow our player. Now, if I close everything, because we're pretty much done with the camera and I load up the room zero, you can see that we have this big circle here and we have an influence circle point kind of right here. So what I'm doing in this particular case is I'll delete these here so we can play around with them. I want it to have an influence point where I could say if the player comes within this yellow circle, I want to focus on this orange point up here. So that would move the camera up there. Now, the reason I'm using two different objects is because I didn't want to have to figure out where the anchor or where the origin should be. I just found it a little bit easier to say find this orange circle within our influence circle. So find the point and then add that point to the camera. So let's actually, let's leave this right here and let's see how we can do that. So that means that let's open our object influence and we're gonna add a create event and let's add a step event. Let's also add a variable definition and we'll call this lerp underscore speed and let's set the default to 0.02. We can close the variable definition because we're going to be using it later on. So in the create event, we need a couple different things. We need to know what the current camera is. We need to figure out the focus point that we're going to be looking at. And then we need to store some original values from our target. So that would be our camera itself. So let's start off by creating these variables. So we'll have a camera instance equal to no one. We will have a focus point instance equals no one and we can have an original target and that again will equal no one so this original target if you think about it currently our camera is set up on our human so we're going to be playing with that target so we need a way to set it back we also have some offsets that we need to keep track of so we'll have an original camera offset x and we'll set that to zero I'll copy and paste that for the Y and set it to zero as well. And then if you remember when we were setting up our camera, we had this lerp speed. So we're going to be keeping track of that as well. So that means that we are also going to have an original camera lerp and we'll set that to zero. So then we have all these different variables. We need a way to actually get them. In order to get them, let's go to the step event. And the first thing I want to do is I want to check to see if we have a focus point. So if the focus underscore point instance equals no one then we're going to come into this if statement and what i want to do is i want to basically say is the focus point inside this yellow circle so i can do that by bringing over my code and going the focus point i can spell instance equals instance place at the X and Y coordinates, and I'm going to look for that influence focus point. So this is going to be using the collision mask. So we're going to be checking at the X and Y coordinates of our circle, this yellow guy, for this orange obstacle or for, for that orange focus point. And 
this is going to either to it's going to return no one or it's going to return the id so we can easily say if we don't have anyone then keep checking until we do now if we do have a focus point so we could say uh if we have a focus point or we could just say else i'll just say if for now if we have a focus point then we need to see if our human or our player is inside the circle as well and we can do that with another function called place meeting so this just returns true or false we want to check the x and y coordinates and we want to see if the object human falls within that circle so if the object human falls within the circle then now we need to check our camera instance so if our camera instance equals no one then well you guessed it we are going to have to find our camera so to do that, we could say the camera instance is going to be the instance underscore find, and that's a function. And we are going to look for the camera object and return the first one in our room. So we can get away with that because we only have one camera. You may need to set something up if you have different cameras. So after that, once we've set our camera instance, we need to set those targets and those original values. So we could say if the original, I can't spell original, target equals no one so this means that we haven't set anything then we are going to set the original target is equal to our camera instance dot target and these variables that we're using here they exist on this camera itself so you can see that uh, we have the target and the offsets and then we have the lerp speed so we're going to be using those guys so we set the target and I'm just going to copy the word original so I don't have to keep typing it out. So we want to also store the original offset X and the offset Y. And finally, we need to store the lerp value. So I'll just copy and paste this camera stuff in here and we will fix it up in one second. So for the offset X, we'll type that in the offset Y and then the lerp speed. We'll add our semicolons onto the end to make everything look nice. Now that we have all the originals set, we could say the camera instance dot target is going to be equal to this focus point. And just like before, we need to set the X and Y offsets. So we'll set the X and Y offset, but I'm gonna set them to zero because I don't want any offsets in this particular case. What you could do is because we're using this orange object as the actual anchor point, I don't feel like we need to have the offsets on there. So I'm just setting them to zero. And then what we need to do is we need to say our lerp speed is going to be equal to the lerp speed found on our influenced circle here. So if everything is set up and I go back to my room, and I look at this yellow circle, I'll put it right here. So I get really close to um, the edge here and I double click and I go to variables. You can see that we have that lerp speed right there. Let's go ahead and hit F5 and we're not done, but this should start conveying some of the things we wanna do. So you can see that the camera moved down into position. However, when I walk away, our camera's not resetting. So all we have to do is do that particular thing. So if we go back to our workspace and particularly our influence guy, let me close everything in the room, give us some more room. So in here, if we are meeting with, if our object comes into contact with the human, then we do this stuff here. So otherwise, what we want to say is else. So we haven't come into contact or our object has walked out. We'd say if we have a camera instance, so if that does not equal no one, so that means that we've set the camera instance. So we've only set the camera instance if we've come into contact. So we've actually gone over that circle. Then what we want to do is we want to reset some of these values. So I'll just copy this stuff right here and I'll paste it in and we're just going to flip it around. So the camera target equals the original target. The camera offset X equals the original offset X and so on and so on. So we'll just finish this up here. So we've reset all the values on the camera. Next, let's reset our camera instance. So we'll set it to no one. 
And the final thing, I'm going to set our original target equal no one as well. So now when we walk out of the circle, everything should reset. So let's hit F5. Let's walk towards that circle. You can see our camera comes into view there. And when we walk out, it goes back to the player. So the reason I've done this, and I'm going to load up our room, is we have this circle here. So I will grab these two instances. I'm going to move them, let's say move them right here. But now I can also use this guy, and I can put him in the room. And I'll make him a little bit bigger. Uh, if I can grab the corner here, I'm going to make him that big. So that means that when my character is pretty much on the edge, I'm going to focus in on over here. So we have two circles here, and if we hit F5, we should be able to use the first one here. So we should focus down here at the bottom, and we do. And when I leave, we go back to our player, and when I walk to the edge, we automatically focus over here. So now we have a system all set up where we can have fo focus points, and our game will work nicely. Um, probably the only thing you'd want to do if you didn't want to say focus on afterwards, if we go to our influence and we go to our step guy, when we walk outside of this, we could just say instance destroy. So we get rid of ourselves. And you'd probably want to destroy that focus point because we are no longer using it. So let's destroy both of them. Instance destroy that item. So now we walk in and once we leave, the influence point can no longer be used. So when I walk over here, you can see it doesn't happen anymore. And when I walk out of this guy, I can see the coin and I'm like, oh wait, I want to check it again. It doesn't work. So you, um, you can use it like that or you can create different Boolean. Anyway, hopefully you've learned a thing or two and I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, but thank you for watching. This video was made possible by my Patreon supporters and in no particular order, a special shout out to the following. Annie, Edward, Manuel, Jujubi84, Kylie, Jesus, Victor, Ashby, and Paul. If you like my work and would like to show support beyond subscribing, check out my Patreon page for more information. As well, you can see that this video includes a free game for Hitman 2. First come, first serve. Thanks for watching.